Hello everybody, let's right jump in. As you may know, I had the idea of making an Edwardian inspired dress, incorporating a lot of crochet lace. So I start with the very base layer, the undergarment. In this case, a pair of combinations. I found many examples, but I settled for a version that can be found in the archive of the Met, which is dated back to the 1890s to 1900. Based on that, I first made a sketch to visualize my idea and further searched for a historical pattern. In the needlework and cutting by Agnes Walker, I found a pattern that suited my idea, so I drafted it based on the given instructions and my personal measurements using a digital drafting tool called Valentina and quickly went on sewing the first mock-up. But I messed it up. There were two things I completely got wrong. One thing is, as you can see, this is way too small. <laughs> I thought, okay, if I take the bust measurements and this fits the pattern, it will be alright. Uh, well, it's not. Because then here uh, here is way too much material so that even if the bust measure measurement would maybe fit, it doesn't because here is not enough material. So I made some changes. Uh, I realized that Actually, not the proportions were the problem, because when I tried to scale it, I realized that what I had in mind made this part, this one piece, so big, it wouldn't, but it would be a dress in itself. So I um, came up with another idea. So I changed the back pieces. I just made them as the front pieces and decided that I now will try to fit it. So I wanted to end more at the waistline, so I have to shorten this. And the good thing about it is now it fits way better. There's enough room. Here's something going yeah, strangely, but I will figure that out. So now I have to edit the waistband and I think it looks much better now. Uh, only here at the back, I th there's so much material, I just I will take something out here. And I guess the next step I do is to cut off the um, seam allowance to see how deep the neckline goes because now I think it's a little bit too high but first I will cut off all the seam allowance to see if that makes it that makes it that if that makes it better <laughs> and add the drawers I just finished to add the um, drawer I had the problem that uh, this part here, the lower upper body, um, was too short, so it was too tight at the crotch. So I added some material around the waist. Because I used old scraps from other projects, um, yeah, I tried to piece it all together. And the other thing I did is I Hook away a bit, little bit material here because it made some it made a hook I didn't like, and I added a little bit more material at the back strap because when I was wearing it, it teared here. So yeah, I hope this is better now. The next thing to do is make the legs because now they are too long and they don't have that um, puffy, lacy fringes. She's finished. I've made my first mock-up. Actually the second one. I had some troubles figuring out how long I want those legs but I decided to go for the long one. 
So now I will mark where I want the lace to be, this, this part, um, down here, and cut it all out and make new patterns. The final version of my pattern has quite a lot of alterations in comparison to the original pattern I used, especially in the length of the leg pieces and the cut of the bodice, partially due to the insertion of the lace I already planned to the pattern in order to avoid wasting fabric. So once I was pleased with the pattern I continued with marking all the pattern pieces on the actual fabric. I went for a sheet cotton wall based on the inspiration. And once this was done I cut it all out. Here I have the two leg pieces and I will start with those two seams um, and closing them because I thought um, I will start with the legs because I already have crocheted the lace for the waistband. So I think I will start here with those lay uh, with those seam lines and I will do it by hand. Since it is the first time I recreate the historical garment, I wanted to make it as historical accurate as possible. And I read many times that linen thread was used in those garments. So I purchased some and started fairly enthusiastic with my very first hands new seam. But I didn't do a great job. I made my first sewing line. But this linen thread is so thick and so stiff, it's, it looks really, yeah, it really tears apart the fabric, at each thread of the fabric. So I tried to use some cotton thread because I really want to use the natural fabric. And I think that this works way better. It is finer and the sewing line just looks more neat but well i have to practice on the regularity of my stitchings but i think with time this will come now i have sewn together both legs and i have completely hemmed and i already learned some stuff because as you can see here my hemming became much finer. My first hem was a lot bigger than the second. And these are the two um, matching seams of the legs. This one was the first one. And as you can see, it's much b um, broader, b wider. And I also made a mistake when I fouled it down. I've cut down the wrong side, so now the not so beautiful side is seen here. Meanwhile, at this one, here is the same seam. Here I've cut the right side and felt it down, so this looks much better. But I think as it is a process of learning, I will let it be that way. So I just wanted to hem the ruffle. And I realized that it is too short because what I have cut out is the ruffle for the back and the front. But um, in the reference uh, I've read, there is said that you should at least use twice as long as where it should be gathered in. And <laughs> this is not twice as long as. This. So I'm thinking about um, yeah, adding another ruffle, but I'm not sure if I cut this out. I cut this so I that I have double the length, or if I slide it in. And but did this means I would have to make a lot <laughs> more of crushed lock lace for the, the part here. So I guess I will cut this here. This 
So now I have the full length for the ruffle with four stripes. In the meantime, mostly when it was already too dark and filming got difficult, I crocheted some samples for the waistband. For this I used some re references of historical and modern crochet patterns and I adapted one to fit my needs. I first made this one. I wanted it to look a little bit like a snowflake at the edge, but I think it's too much going on. You can't see the pattern here, so I decided I won't go for with that one. And I also made it in a really thick yarn with a three and a half needle, um, just to be uh, yeah fast. And so because of this, I didn't like that. I started with this one. This is uh, I found a pattern for this, and I had the idea to just put them together like this and to insert a ribbon in those gaps. And here I thought it would be fun, it looks nice, but it, with the really fine uh, yarn I don't like it anymore. There are these nibbits I don't like. So I think I will go for this rather clean design and... Oh, you can't see it. Here it is. Once the waistband was complete, I gathered the upper part of the legs and stroked those gatherings. Then I sewed it on with a whip stitch. Actually, I wasn't that happy with this method, since I ended up with that tiny hem standing upright behind the lace, instead of having a smooth intersection of the lace and the fabric, but at this point I wasn't willing to rip open the whole hem and instead decided to go on with it. The next step I took was sewing together the ruffles and crocheting the insertion lace that will be placed between the leg and the ruffles. This ribbon is composed of a ribbon which is crocheted to the length of the leg and then I added a couple of rows to the sides in order to get a clean edge. Especially in the first days I used a leather symbol to protect my finger against this somewhat pointy needle. Since the crocheting of the lace took quite a while, I also started gathering the ruffles. Since I didn't like the way I had sewn the legs onto the waistband, I now decided to use a different method and gather the edge by whipping and gathering. Basically, I'm creating a tiny roll at the edge of the fabric stitching around it and pulling the thread tight every couple centimeters. For most of the garment I used the cotton thread, only when it came to the whip and gathering of the ruffles and the body I used a silk thread, because the cotton thread broke every couple of centimeters and the silk thread proved to be a lot sturdier. Once the insertion lace was complete, I pinned it onto the leg and sewed it on with a whip stitch. Following that, I sewed on the ruffles on the other side of the insertion lace using the same method, just enhancing the gathering a little bit by pulling the material in. In order to know how long the lace ribbon for the upper body has to be, I now went on and sewed the bodies together, with the side seams and the felling of the front and upper edges. The lace for the body is also based on crochet patterns I found on the internet, but this time set together out of different patterns. So I had a pattern which I used as a base and when it is long enough I added some more rows to the sides to achieve some more fanciness. Finally the base for the body's had a length I believed would be sufficient. In fact, it was a little too long, so I had to rip open a couple of rows.
Now I went on and added the rows to the side of the ribbon. And once this was done and I had steamed the lace, I pinned it on the bodice and whipped it on. This way I got a smooth and clean edge and the sewing is almost invisible. So last night I finished the lace band and I sewn it on. Now I'm thinking about adding a lace here. Um, I don't want it to be as broad, as wide as this one. Otherwise the other idea would be to let it be as uh, simple as this, but I don't like it. I, I think I will make a smaller crochet lace here. Then I have to crush it the stripes for the holders. And I have to think about how to close this. I think I will go with some tiny hook and eyes, but I'm not sure yet. And another step I have to do is to sew this on the waistband. But I think I will first make the lace for the front here, so I know where I have to sew this on, but because it won't be here, I think rather here. Yeah, that's our next step. So I just have finished this crochet part and I was thinking about um, this part here because this outer edge should look, look like this one. So this one is actually this part here. And I was thinking if I put it here, I think it's strange if it doesn't go on here. So what I was thinking, that I now go on and sew this on and this and afterwards I make this outer part of the lace. That's my plan for now. Now I went on and crocheted the second lace for the front closure and once this was done I put it all together. So the upper part is completely made, the whole lace is done and um, I think I made a mistake figuring out how much material I need here. So it's a little bit yeah, peeking out here, but I will see how this works. Maybe this part will sag down a little bit. So it isn't that obvious anymore, I will see. I will have to make the closures. I think I will add tiny, 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 tiny little buttons I can close with a gap of this pattern. And I have to make the shoulder straps. I first thought I will crochet them, but I think there's already enough going on, so probably I will just make them out of the base material and add only a tiny bit of the crochet at the sides. Um, so yeah, I, get, I think I will do that now and cut them out and sew them on. And I have to figure out if I want to sew it on here or there. I'm not sure about that yet. So I've just finished um, hemming the shoulder straps and defining where they should sit. And now I'm wondering if I add some lace at the edges. I think this only this is too small and two rows is too clean. So I know I'm wondering if I just add this part um, or if I just let it be really clean. But I'm not sure. Maybe I will just make one stripe or, or one ribbon with this. Um, pattern and see if the, I like it. 
So I just finished the first edge lace to see if I like it. It has to be steamed because right now it is really, yeah, frilly. <laughs> uh, but I like it, so I will go on with it. So I went on and crocheted the remaining three ribbons and steamed them. One thing I learned during the creation of these combinations is how important steaming is to create beautiful crocheted lace. While the lace is in the making, it twists in all directions and only once it is steamed into place, the tension creating the twist releases and the lace lies nice and flat. Especially with points, the steaming is rather important since you can fixate these into place. To enhance this further, it would be possible to starch the lace, but I didn't do that here because I found the lace sturdy enough. Then I went on and sewed the lace on the shoulder straps. So now I have sewn on the lace at this side at the front side and here at the back side. And as you can see, here is a little row of the um, of the seam and here not. I prefer this side but I won't open this one. I just uh, change the sewing direction on this part and I will put it on the front side of the bodice. But yeah, now I have finished this part and continue with the second one. I tested on me where the strap should be placed and when I finally had decided where, I sewed them on, with a part of the lace peeking over the strap. Since I was pondering for so long how I want to close the whole thing, I went searching how to make some buttons. I didn't like the buttons I had currently available, so I thought it would be a good idea. I came across some thread buttons which were commonly used during the 18th century on men's shirts and I decided to go for these. They are not period accurate, I guess, but I liked their look and allowed myself some freedom at this part. Now that the combinations were almost finished, I ran out of yarn. So for the final lace, which I want to add to the ruffles, I was only able to make some samples and a part of the first ribbon, but then I had to wait. I actually ordered some new yarn, but I messed up with the specifications, so it is too thick and since there is no store in my town selling this yarn, I had to ask a friend to buy some for me. This will take a while, so I decided to go on and add the satin ribbon to the waistband and the legs. Since I put some effort in using only natural fibers in this project, I looked for some satin ribbon not made of polyester, which was quite difficult, but I was lucky and found an online shop selling cotton satin ribbon. One side effect of this decision is that the ribbon can't be fixated with heat like a synthetic one. So I tried some nail polish, but I regretted it soon due to the darker spots at the edge. And I cut it off and just hoped that the diagonal cut of the edges is enough to prevent from frilling. After inserting the satin ribbon into the lace, I tried a couple of methods to connect them. But again, I wasn't satisfied with the outcome. Another idea that came into my mind led to another solution. I realized that it would be great to be able to remove the petrol rim for washing. This way I don't risk any color bleeding. So I went on and sewed a press button on the edges of the now hemmed edges of the ribbon. I'm not completely happy with that because they are out of plastic and it doesn't look great, but I decided to hide them with two bows.
combinations could be called finished now, despite the missing lace for the ruffles of course. But I decided to make a fitting and show you the actual result. Once I have the matching yarn, I will go on and show you the final result, of course. But for now I will continue with the corset, so stay tuned, leave any comments if you want, and I see you in my next video.